Currently the best team in the state of California, the Sacramento Kings will improve to 9-6 if they win against the Pistons on Sunday. As of now, this team's 8-2 in their last 10 games, with the two losses only coming on a Tyler Hero uncalled travel and a Klay Thompson uncalled foul. Regardless of how you feel about those controversial L's, the one-two punch of De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis is undeniably dominant. The space opened up for these two offensively this year comes down to the players acquired this offseason in Kevin Herter and Malik Monk, who are both deep-range marksmen who love to spot up and even hit triples off the bounce. The Sacramento Kings have a mission, so let's delve into exactly what that is and what's making them so tough to beat right now. But right quick, just 8.8% of you watching are subscribed, so if even a quarter of you were, that'd be massive. Splash thumbs up to help this video and YouTube's algorithm. The Sacramento Kings have won five straight games, and the biggest factor fueling that out of anything has to be De'Aaron Fox being the best version of himself. His vocal leadership and body language has been evidently on point. Fox has also been incredibly clutch. He's number two just behind Donovan Mitchell and just ahead of Shea Gilgis Alexander in clutch scoring. That calmness under pressure was on display in Orlando after the feisty Magic pulled off a dramatic late game comeback. No timeouts here for the Kings. Fox, two, Fox from midcourt. Got it! De'Aaron Fox! The best player in the game to have never made an all-star team is currently averaging career highs in field goal, free throw, and three-point percentage. From zero to three feet, Fox is also making a career high of his shots, shockingly making over 90% of his baskets in the restricted area. The 25-year-old product of Kentucky has been one of, if not the NBA's most criminally under-talked about star players for quite some time. Now he's putting it all together in terms of being an elite scorer on all three levels, and most importantly, the front office in Sacktown has finally done him justice by surrounding him with the right complimentary guys. For De'Aaron, what stands out to me most is his turnaround jumper in the lane, which has gotten so much better. That's a big reason for why he's making an absurd 60.5% of his mid-range shots. From there, the beastliness inside of the player this franchise received in a trade involving Tyrese Halliburton and DeMontis Sabonis has fit the needs of De'Aaron perfectly, which is why it made so much sense for Sacktown to make a deal for Domas at last year's trade deadline. While it was tough to let go of such a high upside guard in Halliburton, who's currently leading the NBA in assists per game with Indiana, Sacramento had been looking to pair the electric playmaking talent of De'Aaron with a big man composed of the skill set of Sabonis for many years. They couldn't get that with Marvin Bagley or anyone else they signed, so they had to do it through the trade market. They couldn't have found a better pick and roll slash low post outlet to help serve De'Aaron than the two-time All-Star in Domas. Oddly, the two players involved in that aforementioned blockbuster trade in Sabonis and Halliburton rank number 9 and 10 respectively on the NBA's current MVP ladder. Most underrated part about Sabonis' game is the quietly elite playmaking he provides for a big, DeMontis is posting a hefty 5.9 dimes per night so far, second among centers, only behind the greatest passing center of all time in Nikola Jokic. Whether it's weak side dump-offs after drawing multiple bodies, hanging onto it in your typical DHOs, or finding backdoor cutters with slick one-handed dimes, Sabonis' passing gives Sacramento a confident scoring rhythm, maybe the second biggest factor behind the Kings' success, aside from this being the first time Fox has gone through a training camp with another star caliber player next to him, has been the roster collectively buying in to new coach Mike Brown's offensive-based system. The former Warriors assistant and longtime head coach for the Cleveland Cavaliers may need to get his guys thinking a bit more defensive-minded, given the Kings rank number 26 in efficiency on that end of the court, but the flow offensively has been smooth sailing thus far, only behind the raging, on-a-tear Boston Celtics, who own the greatest efficiency in the history of basketball right now on offense, the Kings own the NBA's second-best offensive rating at 118, Sacktown's also averaging the most points per game in the association at 120.3. Big reason for that offense looking so much smoother in comparison to prior years is the fact that GM Monty McClare brought in legitimate deep range snipers this offseason by trading for Kevin Herter and signing Malik Monk. We'll start with the latter in Monk, who's a product of Kentucky and the 2017 NBA draft class, just like his good friend De'Aaron Fox. The chemistry those two previously built up at the college level has translated nicely to the current season. These two also mesh really nicely in terms of their play styles, since Fox likes to attack downhill relentlessly with his shiftiness and speed, and Monk thrives off spotting up and relocating off the ball while benefiting off the gravity drawn by other shot creators. Against San Antonio, Fox and Monk were a combined 
22 for 34 from the field with 54 points and just one turnover. The Beam Bros are getting it done at an extremely impressive clip, nearly a quarter of the way through the season. De'Aaron's true shooting mark is second best among point guards, only behind Steph, and Malik Monk's 59.7% true shooting clip ties him with Devin Booker. But it's the third member of the Beam Bros in Kevin Herter who's been most efficient, as the former Atlanta Hawk owns a 67.2% true shooting clip, which is number one at the shooting guard position. It's amazing to think that the front office was able to acquire a 16 point per game scoring deep range flamethrower without having to give up too much. The 2019 All-Rookie second team member in Kevin was acquired by Sacramento this past summer in exchange for veterans Maurice Harkless and Justin Holiday, in addition to a future first rounder. Like Monk, Herter's another high-volume, efficient spot-up marksman who's also capable of hitting deep-range bombs off the bounce. Next to one of the game's most dynamic point guards in Swipe of the Fox, you can never get enough floor spacing. More specifically, you can never get enough pure shooters, and it's good to finally see a Sacramento executive realize that's what the team was lacking. Malik Monk started wearing a band-aid under his right eye after suffering a scratch on the cheek in a November 7th game against the Golden State Warriors. Ever since, Malik started an entire band-aid gang with fans, team family members, and even owner Vivek Ranadiv rocking the band-aid in support of this meme. Despite averaging 8 less minutes per game than he did with the LA Lakers last year, Monk's averaging a career-best 4.2 dimes per night, almost double his output in that stat category from any prior year. Clearly, the game has slowed down down for the mere 24-year-old who's now seeing the benefit of having six years of pro experience under his belt. Whether it's versatile stretch bigs in Chimeze Metu and Trey Lyles, the slowly developing product of Baylor and Davion Mitchell, or two-way wings with a ton of experience in Harrison Barnes and Terrence Davis, there's some solid depth for Coach Brown to rely on. Terrence Davis is such an overlooked weapon. What I love about TD is that he's the ideal shot-creating sharpshooter blend, in the sense that he's got a high-arcing, fundamentally sound shooting release and niftily quick off-the-dribble combinations. But we've gone this entire video without breaking down the King's rookie sensation, Keegan Murray. Currently in November, Keegan's having game-to-game -game inconsistencies with opposing game plans tightening up on him. The reason coaches are scouting him so hard right now comes down to how well he played in October, albeit in just five games. The first month of Keegan's pro basketball career saw him average 17.4 points over a steal and a block, plus four rebounds per game, on a shooting split of 49.3, 39.5, 85.7. If Murray can regain that beginner's mindset from his first few games and simultaneously adjust to what opposing game plans are giving him, he's going to get right back to averaging around those numbers but right now, it's just about him contributing to this winning system and letting the game come to him. At 6'8", 225 with a 7-foot wingspan and 8'9 standing reach, Murray has the stature which allows him to shoot over the top of closeouts and, defensively, lock up the perimeter like an elite combo forward. Lighting the beam on a regular basis, the usually lowly Sacramento Kings aren't messing around and their hot start is far from a fluke. This team's on an obvious mission to gain some organizational respect, also, their top options in Fox, Sabonis, even guys like Monk and Herter are extremely hungry in their own right for individual respect as players, but are the Kings a fluke in your opinion? Two shoutouts from my last video and this one next time. Thanks for watching, have a good one.